Hi everyone, my name's Aaron McGuire and today I'm going to talk about The Devil All the Time. This is a new movie directed by Antonio Campos that I was really excited to see once I heard about the cast. Tom Holland, Robert Pattinson, Sebastian Stan, Bill Skarsgård all in the same movie. And right off the bat, all of them give incredible performances. They definitely carry a lot of the movie. Tom Holland has some really amazing dramatic scenes in this movie and though it was hard to get used to him with a southern accent, he does pull it off and he's really convincing. And a lot of the big dramatic scenes in this movie are really elevated by his performance. And he's definitely playing a different character than I've ever seen him before, going from the happy-go-lucky, fun-loving Peter Parker to this. He's really proving himself to be a super talented and very versatile actor. There's Robert Pattinson who does a great job playing this totally despicable character. His performance is definitely hammy and over the top, but that's exactly what his character is trying to do, is trying to show everyone that he's super righteous and passionate, even though he is a scummy, terrible person. <laughs> And he pulls it off really well. I think he was really great. And just a mini rant real quick. If any of you only know Robert Pattinson from the Twilight movies, he's actually really good. And he's really proven himself with movies like Good Time, The Lighthouse, even Tenet. He's incredible in them. So please give him a chance. He's really great. All the supporting cast is great too. There's Jason Clark, Riley Keough. Oh, my stomach was growling. Uh, Harry Melling. They all do a fantastic job. And speaking of Harry Melling, if you don't like spiders, there is a certain monologue towards the beginning that you might want to skip. You'll see him pull up a glass jar full of spiders, so that's kind of your cue to skip ahead a minute. The film style definitely reminded me of the Coen brothers. I wouldn't be surprised at all if No Country for Old Men was a big inspiration for it. And the film starts off very slow, just setting everything up, all the characters and plot points seemingly unrelated to each other. But seeing all the stories come together at the end, coming full circle, is really satisfying and fun to watch. The payoffs and tie-ins to earlier scenes are really exciting, and even though watching the movie for the first time, there were a lot of scenes where I didn't really know where the movie was going, now that I know what the movie builds up to, I'm really excited to rewatch it, and I'm sure it'll give a lot more purpose to earlier scenes in the film. I still have some issues with the film structure though, there are scenes that feel a bit slow, and I do feel like the music was maybe overused a bit. It does suit the film's very dark and unnerving tone really well, and it's great music. And there were certain scenes that I felt would have been more tense and more effective if there wasn't any music at all. Oh god, and my biggest issue the entire movie is the narration. God help you if you use voiceover in your work, my friends. God help you. This is one of the most obnoxious narrations in any movie I've ever seen. What better way to take you out of a movie than to have a narrator explaining everything that's already going on? I understand that some movies might have a narrator if you want to hear the main character's internal thoughts, or if your story's meant for children it might be good to have a narrator to better explain what's going on, but I have a feeling that the target audience of this movie, adults, watching this R-rated movie, isn't going to have issue telling what's going on. A lot of the narration is just communicating things that are already being shown to us by the film's dialogue, the facial expressions, the character's actions. It'll explain something totally obvious and it's like, yep, I got it, I'm, I'm watching the movie. I, I, There are so many distracting scenes where the narrator just comes in and is like, and in that very moment, the character realized that they were feeling a bit upset. And it adds nothing to the movie. It's so obnoxious and it kept taking me out of it. And this wouldn't even be a big issue if it was just a few scenes, but I feel like there's a narration at least every 10 minutes or so. And it's such a shame because I think this movie could have been an 8 or even a 9 out of 10 without it. And I would not object to an edit of this movie without any narration at all. It would be as ridiculous as having a narrator for this video. And in that very moment, Aaron McGuire realized he was getting a bit too angry about the narration and little old the devil all the time and decided that he should just wrap up the review. Well, anyway, despite some of the issues I have with this movie, The Devil All the Time is still really great. It's intense, it's disturbing, it's super messed up. It does a great job setting the film's dark tone with its music and its cinematography. And it does a great job establishing very sympathetic characters. Ah. And it does a great job establishing very sympathetic characters, and some of which that are totally unlikable. 
I loved all of the performances, I loved the screenplay, I loved the film's unflinching dark tone, and even though I felt like it started a bit slow, the fantastic third act really ties everything together in a satisfying way. It's definitely not perfect, it's definitely not for the faint of heart, but I did think it was really great, and I would recommend it to those looking for a disturbing crime thriller. And I'm gonna give The Devil All the Time a 7 out of 10. I also got to see the new Christopher Nolan movie, Tenet. And I'm gonna keep my review of this a bit short because I didn't know what was going on half the time. So I feel like I can't really give it a fair assessment now. I really hope I have a similar experience like I did with Inception, where I didn't really know what was happening the first time, but the second watch, I got a lot more out of it, and I think I know what it's about. But as of right now, I've only seen Tenet once, and I'm probably gonna hold off on rewatching it until it gets released on digital. I didn't really want to see it in theaters yet because we're, you know, it's a pandemic. But I noticed it was playing at a local drive-in, but the drive-in was way too dark. I don't know if it's an issue with the guy who set it up or if it's the equipment being used, but it was just way too dark. And of course, this just added more confusion to an already confusing movie. It would be really great to be able to see this movie at my own home with subtitles, Christopher. But anyway, as for the actual movie, I thought it was really great. Despite being a very confusing movie, I thought the sci-fi concepts were really interesting and unlike anything I'd seen before. And even though I didn't know what was happening, it definitely held my attention as I was trying to figure everything out. And even without understanding everything, it is an incredible spectacle. There are many elaborate set pieces that are very impressive and very ambitious. There are scenes where characters are interacting with each other, ones that are going forward and ones that are going backward at the same time. There's a fight scene where John David Washington is going forward, but his opponent is going backward. And I, I, how, I don't know how they even choreographed it. The action scenes in this movie are just really exhilarating, and Christopher Nolan knows exactly what he's doing in these scenes. The characters are all fairly likable, and everyone does a really good job. John David Washington and Robert Pattinson are both great, and they work really well off each other. But it's important to keep in mind this isn't really a character-driven movie. It is a spy thriller or a sci-fi thriller where the mission and the spectacle take priority. I thought the music worked really well with this movie, adding a lot of excitement to it. And I heard that many people were unhappy with the sound mixing in this movie, but... Again, I was just watching with car speakers, so I can't really comment on it, and nothing sounded off to my ears. Overall, I had a really great time watching Tenet, and I'm really hoping it gets a digital release soon so I can re-watch it and give it a more fair assessment. But as for now, I really love the action, I really love the ideas that this movie has, and the more I think about it, the more I, I think I know what's going on in it, and the more that I love it. And I'm gonna give Tenet an 8 out of 10, but who knows what my rating will be on a rewatch. Maybe it'll be a 7, maybe it'll be a 9, maybe it'll just be an 8, I don't know. Well, anyway, thank you all for watching this video, thank you all for listening, and thank you all for existing. You're all important, you're all loved, and I love you. Mm -hmm. I'm currently watching a lot of movies for the New York Film Festival, so expect a lot of reviews of those movies coming soon. Thank you all for watching. Oh, whoops, I already said that, and um, I don't know how to end these videos still. Expect more videos soon. Uh, yeah. 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 And the... I'm almost done. You should have it for your outtakes.